Slavery reparations shall come in the form of the Lord's vengeance. I want to give all the honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rabbi Ha Kodash. Double honors to my elders at Great Millstone. Sing honors to the elect. Peace and blessings to the one third. All the into the confusion of faces in the four corners of the earth shall alarm. Um, Barbados demands $4.9 trillion from former slave owning countries. Says Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley has urged the UK to pay $4.9 trillion in reparations for the transatlantic slave trade. In a speech in London on Wednesday, she added that talks over how this debt should be repaid will, quote, be difficult and will take time, unquote. We're not expecting that the reparatory damages will be paid in a year or two or five because the extraction of wealth and the damages took place over centuries. But we are demanding that we be seen and that we are heard, the prime minister said. <clears throat> First and foremost, the transatlantic slave trade's biblical prophecy as well. Okay. Deuteronomy 28, 68, the Lord said we will go into slavery or ships. Now I understand you're asking a people, the most vilest of the earth, talk about Esau, Edom, to look at you as if you're human. You have to remember, it's always embedded in the minds of them and even in the whole world that the so-called Negro Latinos and Native Americans were put in the hardcore bondage for centuries, right? And the so-called Negro Latinos and Native Americans are the Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. The Bible proves that, and also secular history proves that. Now, in addition, Zechariah 11, <clears throat> verse 4 through 5. Thus saith the Lord my God, and Lord of all capital is Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh, Allah Hayyanawah, feed the flock of the slaughter. Who's this flock of the slaughter? That's us, the Israelites. We were the ones that were slaughtered in the transatlantic slave trade. Whose possessors slay them. These are the same people you want reparations from, right? And hold themselves not guilty. Hence the Emancipation of Proclamation. I guess Jim Crow laws, segregation, civil rights movement, right? KKK. I guess none of that rung a bell that they don't give a damn. And they that sell them say, yes, we were sold. And they that sell them say, blessed be the Lord for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. So they know who we are because even the Lord said that they will say bless our God because they're rich. And prime example how the Lord's name is dreadful among the heathen. Those small hats, those curly sideburn people, they don't call on the name Yahweh. They call him Hashem. And Hashem literally means the name. So it's not even the name, but I digress. But remember, these curses were brought upon us because of our hardcore, I'm sorry, because of our stubbornness, our stiffness. Remember, Isaiah 52 and 3, for thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Our people keep talking about getting reparations, reparations, reparations. You must understand, going into... The book of Maccabees in the Apocrypha, it says that what nation have not had a hand in her captivity? You're talking about the UK? You're talking about Esau? Hell, Ishmael, the Saudi Arabians, they had a big hand in the transatlantic slave trade. I.e., remember when Joseph was sold to the to the to the um slave traders? Guess who they were? Ishmaelites. Yep, Saudi Arabians. Yep. That's who our uh, forefathers gave Joseph up to. And they had a big part in our slavery as well. You got to go into the history of the, um, the Saudi Arabians and the transatlantic slave trade. Because a lot of our people are actually over there in um, India. Right? When they abolished, quote unquote, abolished slavery, they started shipping us over to India. 
and they have some people over there called the um oh, I forgot what they call them. But when you look at the slums of a lot of these countries all around the world, a lot of them really are people because that curse will follow you regardless of how you look. Right? That's why it's not really a color thing. But that's the staple. That's the template of how the Israelites originally looked. They were dark-skinned, melanated people. But because we've been scattered all over the world because of the slave trade, we look like everybody on the face of the earth. But those curses, one thing you can't deny. All right? But, um, <clears throat> I wish I remembered their name. Give me one second. I, I apologize. Thank you for your patience. So I type, I pretty much typed in the important India I've called, and they're called the untouchables. All right. These people do unfavorable jobs. However, a group exists, um, exists outside, outside the case system that is below the rank of Shudras. These people are known as Dalits or the untouchables. Here is some information about Dalit poverty in India. So in other words, I'm just letting you know we're all over the world, right? <clears throat> It goes back to the confusion of faces as well. Okay, we, we, won't, we won't look like all John Shaft for dark skinned people. We will look like everyone on the face of the earth. So, Isaiah 59 1 through 4. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, yeah, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you, and he will not hear. So, as you, as you look at the injustice, the violence, the deceit, the treachery that has, has been happening to our people, and let me be 100, amongst our people, and your mind is like, oh my God, how can we be God's people? Look at what we're going through. But you got to remember. We are royal people, and we were acting like serfs. Serf is another word for like a lowly individual, a servant. So the Lord said, okay, I'm going to put you under the heathen, not only under them, the vilest of them, the least of the, of the heathen, and look at the state that we are in right now. So we've separated ourselves from our God. Indeed, oh, they will. They will pay. I have to bring it to your recollection of why we are in a predicament we're in. Isaiah 59 and 3. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleaded for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Yes, that's our people to this day. All right? Like Deontay Wilder said, to this day, that's our people. So we have anyone to blame is really our own selves. But prophecy must be fulfilled. Understand, Baruch chapter 4, verse 27 through 29. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto God. Yahweh, that's what we do. Isaiah 58 and 1 says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shoot my people Israel their transgressions, your sins. That's what we are crying about, for the abominations thereof. Yeah? Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto Yahweh, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So, yes. Slavery, the hangings, the burnings, the rapes, the pillaging, the selling of our children. I mean, the, 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 the vilest of the vilest. I mean, using our babies, our infants as gator bait. That's an actual picture of our children, a real picture, not an illustration, a picture of, of our infants. And it's in the frame and at the bottom, it clearly says alligator bait. So when you got Jake in the South in Texas wearing gator shoes, man, that's like a mockery of your own people. But I digress. It's all vanity anyway. But you understand what I'm getting at, right? 
I can go on and on about all the treacherous things they've done to us, but that's not what we're here for right here. We're here to let you know that reparations will not be in the form of monetary means. It will be in the form of taking the earth and the heathens that are round about. Lego. Verse 28. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, Yahweh, so be in return, seek him ten times more. And that's what we do, giving all diligence to make our calling and election sure. Verse 29, for he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. Let that sink in like an Alabama tick on a horse. The Lord, it says right here, for he that brought these plagues upon you. So in other words, that's like a judge giving you a sentence, a life sentence, right? Shall I bring you everlasting joy with your salvation as all of a sudden you're going to be pardoned by the warden. That's what's happening. We we were put in this prison by Yahweh because of our iniquities, because of our sins. Esau was just the catalyst behind the Lord's plan to do it to us. It was even prophesied in Genesis. Remember, it says the elder shall serve the younger, but Esau hasn't served us fully under captivity. No, David, hey, David brought that pain, but no, no, not yet. It's not yet. Revelation 13, 9 and 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. <clears throat> That's a lot to be said here, but in other words, that goes back to in the scripture where it says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You led the Lord's people into captivity. You're going to go into captivity and hey, all the heathen nations because you all reap the benefits of our slavery. Let this sink in, y'all. It's called supply and demand when you're dealing with economic trade, right? Economic value. There's no point of supplying someone if they're not demanding it, right? <laughs> I'm going to use this in a very lame term. Remember FUBU that came out? When it first came out, it was in high demand. Oh, for what's about us? When the last time you heard somebody saying, hey, man, you got the new FUBUs, right? Nah, it ain't that hard to man. So for centuries, for us to be in the captivity, for us to continue to pick cotton and tobacco and cut sugar cane and all of that, in order for us to do that for centuries, there had to be a high demand. So who the hell was Esau selling to? The heathen nations. So all y'all going to get it. All y'all. So what is a saint? Well, we know by definition it's an Israelite, but in this Martin Day Christianity, ain't no way in the hell a heathen could be a saint. Because the Lord said, this is the patience and the faith of the saints to want the Lord to put the spirit on us to put y'all back, to put not even back, to put y'all into captivity. Because y'all kept the fuel born. Y'all kept, y'all kept putting the coal in the fire to keep that train rolling. By y'all constantly buying the goods that we were gathering. Oh, there's so many precepts I can bring. I'm thinking about James right now. The one that says, oh, how you rich men, you know, the Lord of Sabaoth. It says to how you, um, we have reaped your fields. And, 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 and we have got nothing. <clears throat> and, and the Lord hear our cries. Yeah, all of that. We planted vineyards that have not drunk from the, from the vine. We've built your houses and have not slept in them. Like, the Lord haven't forgot about that. I won't either. Now, about two thirds are going to die anyway, but I won't either. And nor shall the, the, those of the saints that patiently wait upon their power. Nonetheless, we don't want your money. It's cankered. It's done for. It's, it's, it's worm right now. Psalms 2 and 8 through 9. Ask of me. This is what you should be asking, Prime Minister. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Let that sink in, because what greater value is there other than a human? Now, understand what I'm saying? 
You can have all of the natural resources. You can have the gold, the zinc. You can have the oil. You can have the iron. You can have all those natural resources. But if you're royalty, who's going to go out there and mine those fields? Who's going to go out there and gather it? You're going to need people. Forget the money. People. And we're going to have people under us subjugated. Thus saith the Lord. So once again, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Imagine having an iron rod and there's a clay pot and you just smash it. Oof. I don't know how you're going to put that pot sure back together with glue. It's over, right? So I'll leave you with this one. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25 through 27. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. Pump your brakes, Prime Minister. Just calm down. Verse 26. And he that overcometh, and Yahabashim shall be with us to the end, and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Right now the Lord has sent for many fishers, but he shall soon send for many hunters. And close out. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a pot shall they be broken to shivers. Even as I received of my father. So what do you think? Yeah, how is shall I going to do when he come back? She? <laughs> Who is this with dyed garments from Basra? Yeah, how shall I said I treaded the wine press alone. Hmm. But nonetheless, with that being said, I pray you was air, fire, and fed. Stay in the spirit. Don't fear it. Just endure it. Ask for forgiveness. Pray without ceasing. Stay humble. Remain diligent. Kwame Allah. Wafla Baba. Shalom.